any white on that page, it was all notes. <laughs> Welcome tonight as we continue with our third midweek Advent service. We've been following the characters, characters of the, of the um, nativity. We started with Zachariah and Elizabeth, and tonight we're going to talk about Joseph as we're coming closer and closer to the, the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. Our, our order of service is outlined in the worship folder that you've already received. If you're watching us online, I'm glad that you're with us too. What a blessing it is to be able to share God's love as he gives it to us again this year. I hope that you comment in the section so that we can know that you're with us and, and celebrate that. Um, before we begin this evening, uh, let's stand up. We'll say good evening to one another, and then when you're finished, you may sit down and we'll continue with the first hymn. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> no. I was wrong. I'm glad you're still standing. We're going to continue with the service. So let's continue with our service and the invocation. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A voice cries out in the wilderness, clear a way for the Lord. Make, Make a way for the desert, a road for our God. Every valley must be lifted up, and every mountain and hill level. The rough places will become a level plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people will see it at the same time. The Lord has decreed it. Go up on a high mountain, O herald Zion. Shout out loudly, O herald Jerusalem. Shout, don't be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The word, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So let us then confess our sins to God and ask for forgiveness. Loving Father, who sent Jesus as our God and Savior, we confess that our distracted doing has shrouded our advent and turned us to follow our own way. Forgive us for shaping the celebration to fit our desires. Seize us by your Spirit. Focus our eyes and hearts on the coming Christ. Inspire us with Christ's advent so that we shout from the house tops the good news that in the coming Savior, God is indeed with us. Make us into your joy-filled messengers, sharing your powerful message of your loving salvation for all. Jesus has promised that our, the sins we forgive on earth will also be forgiven in heaven. Trusting in that precious promise, as a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I confidently declare to you that in Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven, and you are privileged to share the same forgiveness with all the others in your life. We are filled with Jesus' light of life so that we can shine among the people of this world like stars in the sky. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh, leader of us all, guide our footsteps to follow you in all we say and do. Help us to listen to you when you tell us to go. Let our path in this life be blessed through every twist and turn by you, who knows all, and can see the bigger picture of what you have in mind for us. Bring us this Advent season to your manger bed to worship you there. Remind us of the gift that you have given to us of yourself to accompany us through each day and keep pointing us to your cross and empty tomb and lead us by your mercy to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Now you may be seated. We'll continue by singing, Let the Earth Now Praise the Lord. <clears throat>
we hear God's word selected for this evening. In our first lesson is from the Old Testament, the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask a sign of the Lord your God. <coughs> Let it be as deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this evening is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. This also serves as a basis for our message this evening. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We'll continue by singing our next hymn, Savior of the Nations Come. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The gospel lesson that we read a moment ago is the basis for our message. I'm going to read the last two verses again. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. It's Matthew 
who gives us the story of Joseph. It's a story that we all know. I mean, I would tell you to close your eyes, but since it's after seven at night and you've just eaten a full meal, maybe you better keep them open. But imagine for a minute that the story went something like this. You know, Joseph is working. He's a carpenter. But the project he's working on is a special project. It's unlike anything else that he's done. He's working on a little box. It's got all of his skill. It's finally made. It's much better than what he usually does because he's intending it to be a wedding present, a wedding present for Mary. It has to look just right. So as he's working on it, all of a sudden, he hears some footsteps. And to his shock, to his horror, Mary's there. He's got to hide the box, grab another piece of wood, start sanding on it. Joseph, she says, I need to tell you something. Nothing could prepare him for the words that she was about to speak. In fact, I, I expect that Joseph probably only heard two words in all. I'm pregnant. I mean, Mary kept talking, but Joseph, he wasn't hearing anymore. He was full of emotion, shock, anger, pity, pain. Maybe without saying a word, he dropped what was in his hands and he walked away. And for hours, he would have been alone, thinking, wondering, trying to figure out what to do, trying to figure out how she could do such a thing. I mean, he had plans for Mary. I'm sure he had been tempted, but he was going to do the right thing by her. And he expected that she would likewise do the right thing with him, that they would obey God's word. And now it seems she was pregnant. He had options. I mean, the Jewish law allowed him to drag her in front of a, in a public hearing to be condemned as an adulteress. He could have her stoned. And by doing those things, he could save his own reputation. It was his right. But did he really want to do that? He couldn't do that. He couldn't do that because he was still in love with Mary. And we know that because his actions showed that he was still in love with Mary. Instead of publicly bringing her out, he went home quietly, by himself, and in the light of a lamp, he wrote out the words on a piece of paper. He decided to break off the engagement. In the morning, in front of two witnesses, he would give her that paper, and it would be over. And so he went to bed. We don't have to imagine what comes next, because Matthew tells us what comes next. Joseph dream. But it wasn't his dream, it was the Lord's dream. Joseph saw an angel of the Lord, God's messenger, who came to him and said, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. You know, it's a funny thing. Whenever we see angels in scripture, usually the first thing they have to say is, don't be afraid. But Joseph wasn't afraid of the angel. He was afraid of his situation. What the angel had to tell Joseph is, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Joseph, she hadn't been unfaithful. Joseph, she's pregnant virgin. She's pregnant from God. The promised Messiah would come from her. And here's the part that's really amazing. Joseph believed the angel. He believed. And he was transformed by that faith. Because God's gift of a savior moves people. It moved him. And it moves us as well. You see, Joseph, he took Mary home to be his wife. He went back to her the next day, told her everything that he had heard from the angel, and took her to be his wife. 
didn't have relations with her until she gave birth. There was a virgin conception, and Matthew tells us it's going to be a virgin birth. But Joseph, he doesn't. And not only that part of it, Joseph continues to demonstrate his faith. He takes Mary with him when he goes to Bethlehem. Uh, at eight days old, he takes Mary and Jesus, this new boy, who is not his son, to the temple in Jerusalem. Even as, even if, or acting as if Jesus was his own son. When the boy's life was threatened, Joseph took Mary and the child to Egypt to hide from King Herod, who wanted to kill him. And when they return home, Joseph continues to live and to love and to raise Jesus and the rest of his family. When Jesus is lost in Jerusalem at about 11 years old, Joseph spends days searching for him. Joseph is willing to do whatever is necessary because God's gift of the Savior it moves Joseph to action. He responds well. But don't forget that it started as a surprise. Joseph knew God had planned a Messiah to come among his people, but who thinks that God is actually going to work in my own life, in my own household? But God reveals the truth. He convinces Joseph. And then, by God's grace, he makes Joseph to be a part of the plan. And you know what? God continues to work that way today. He surprises us again and again and again. And he calls us and makes us to be a part of the plan. Like Joseph, we may not have anticipated that God would really choose us and make us his own. That he would call us and forgive us and renew us and call us, call us his own children. And like Joseph, we may find that that call, at times, disrupts our life, turns everything upside down. It goes against the plans that we had for ourselves. Consider Joseph. He, his fiance is pregnant. The child is not his. But God's message to believe and not be afraid, it changed him. And so he acted in a way very different than what he would have expected. He faithfully raised the child who wasn't his flesh and blood. And he endured the challenges, the gossip, the jokes, and everything else because God's call had moved him to action. And Joseph, believing in God, responded with a life attempting to live as God had called him to live. Empowered by the Spirit, Joseph did God's work over and over and over again. I'm sure he failed. We all fail at times. We can never fulfill this role perfectly, but in God's forgiveness and by God's power, Joseph served his family and you and me were blessed because of that. For the child that he raised is the one who would be our savior. God called Joseph to that life, to that task. The truth is, he calls more Josephs in the world because the world around us, it needs more Josephs right now. We need people who hear the word of God and as surprising and as unexpected as it may be at times, to believe. We need people who aren't afraid to serve our community, to do the right thing, even when the world expects something different. We need people who are willing to believe and put their faith into practice, to do the hard things, to stand up and serve for the sake of their Savior. We need more Josephs. And God's word tonight is that he provides more Josephs. But we don't look elsewhere to see him because he's called you and me to be Joseph tonight. I mean, who is God calling you to serve? Really, he calls you to consider your lives and to reflect on those that he's made a part of your life as well. 
someone who is ignored or despised by the world, someone who is a part of your life, who, who feels all alone and forgotten, who's been misunderstood, who can see themselves only with the jaded eyes of sin and not with the eyes of Jesus, who needs a Joseph to come into their life, to love them and care for them and work for them? God has called you and me to be the answer. Even as God in his grace changed Joseph's life and empowered him to, to do what God wanted him to do, God comes to you and to me again this Christmas with the same good news. Don't be afraid, for I've come to be with you, for I am Emmanuel, God with us. See, Joseph was called to do remarkable things, but he didn't do it on his own. He always had the guiding hand of God. He always had Emmanuel with him, right in the house. But you and I, we have Emmanuel with us as well. In his word and in his sacrament, we have Emmanuel with us, giving us strength and power, forgiving us, guiding us, leading us. We have Emmanuel with us, God with us. For Joseph, that was more than enough. For you and me, that's more than enough. Whatever we have to do, we don't do it alone. Whatever it is that God calls you and me to, we don't face it alone. We have Emmanuel, God with us. We have each other. We have the gift of our Jesus. It's more than enough trusting in him. We can rejoice that God's gift of a Savior, as it did with Joseph, moves us to action, to love, to serve, to forgive, to believe. Amen. And may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue our worship with our prayers. If you're able, would you stand, please? Let us pray to the Lord. The prayers are printed in your worship folder, and we say them responsibly. Advent, Lord, we long for your return. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord and Savior, forgive us when we are too busy to worship you. Forgive us when we grow impatient and unkind toward others and put our preparations ahead of the people in our lives. Help us to look forward to our celebrations with joy and peace. Advent, Lord, we long for your return. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Lord and Savior, lead us to help those in need during this holiday season to share with others the blessings you have given us. Comfort those who suffer in illness, grief, or loneliness, especially those that we name before you in our own hearts and minds at this time. Advent, Lord, we long for your return. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord and Savior, because of your death and resurrection, we can now serve you without fear, in holiness and righteousness before you all the days of our lives. Fill us with joy as we celebrate, as we prepare to celebrate your birth, and let our joy overflow into the lives of others, so that they too will worship you as their Savior. Advent, Lord, we long for your return. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing that God gives to you tonight and every night. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue or we'll close by singing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. <laughs> tonight those of you who are in person and if you're watching us on Facebook I'm glad you have joined us tonight as well a um, couple of things to remember obviously Sunday morning continues uh, we have Bible class at 9 o'clock we're in the book of Esther uh, a worship at 1030 next week there is no Wednesday night service instead of course we have Christmas Eve uh, at 7 p.m. that's our candlelight service Christmas Day is at 10 a.m., a little different than on Sundays, and we will have communion on Christmas Day. And then, it's a bonus, the next day is a Sunday, and we'll have Bible class at 9 and worship at 10.30. So you're able to join us for each of those services. I hope you do. Okay? Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.